I did a French braid last night. Thank you, my hair will be all cute and curly, but no, it's just poofy and frizzy. So today I am going to be going over my favorite brushes. Some of them do some multitasking. They're all dirty because obviously I just used them. I wanted to show you guys brushes that if you only had these brushes and this beauty blender, you would be good to go. Um, I have a huge collection of brushes. However, when I travel or pretty much everyday basis, I just use these brushes. So I show you guys in detail what each brush is great for. All these brushes will be linked down below um, so you guys can purchase them if you do like them. Some of them are in sets. I will try to find them individually. If not, I will link the set for you guys. So if you guys would like to see my top brushes and demos on each and every brush, then just keep watching. Okay, so I did apply um, Urban Decay's Primer Potion first. So I just want to set that. So I'm going to be taking a scone blending brush. I really wanted to use my Morphe M33. When it's dry, it's wet right now because I did wash them yesterday. When it's dry, it's exactly like this one though. This one is my favorite, the Morphe M330, but it is wet. So I'm going to be taking the scone blending, pretty much exactly the same. And I'm going in with the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics palette. And I'm taking pre-game, and I'm just going to use this to set. This brush is great. I'm not setting my lid. I'm just setting my crease and up to my brow. I use this brush to set my primer as well as apply my transition, which I will show you guys next. This is a great brush for an all over color like this or for your transition because with the transition, I use a light shade and I have a lot of room, I always say that, from my crease to my brow and I really like to get it in there. All right, for my transition, I'm just going to be taking, hmm, what color do I want to use? I'm gonna use Commando. I think that's what it says. Yeah, Commando. And it's a very light shade, but you want your transition to be light. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you back and forth and windshield wiper motions. Let me get some more. So you can barely even see it. This is just gonna help to blend in your crease color when you do apply it. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of a darker color. For this I like to use the M433 brush. I love this brush. This is very comparable to one of my Sephora brushes, if I have it. I don't think I can even find it. It's gone. But I have so many of these. I have about four of these brushes right here. I'm going in with the next shade, which is Tempted. Just a little bit darker with that brush. And I'm going to be a little bit more precise with this color because it is not the transition. It's an actual crease color. Kids keep coming up, so I keep having to stop the video. Okay, so I'm doing this only in my crease. And I'm doing windshield wiper motions again. And you see how this brush just stays in there? It's not like the other one I was showing you, the large fluffy one that is wet, so I use the scone one. It's not like the M330 brush, which is very fluffy out there, great for your transition. I'm just gonna show you guys these compared to each other. So this one's better for like, if you wanna be more precise in your crease, this is better for all over and transition. You could also use this, the MB as in boy, for six brush. I love this brush as well to be more precise. These brushes don't look alike, but I feel they do the exact same job. All right, this is another favorite brush of mine. This is the M507 brush. It is so teeny tiny and precise, like, but it's not that tiny. Let me show you a comparable. So this is a little teeny tiny Morphe brush I got in their newest 12 piece set, which I'll link all these brushes down below. This is the next brush I'm using, which is the M507 brush. So it's not as tiny as this one, but it's super tiny compared to 
the last one I use, M433 brush. So this one's really precise. All right, so I'm going to take this color Faith right here on that little teeny tiny brush. And I'm gonna go in the crease again. But you see how it gets just right there in the crease, just in your socket. You can just put it in your socket if that's where you want it. I love this brush for that, just to create a little bit of depth in your look, but not get carried away. But you could if you wanted. If you wanted to apply it up high, you could, but if you wanna just stay right there, you can. Then if you feel like your look is a little bit too harsh, I like to go in with that one brush I was talking about, MB46, and just go back and forth to just make sure everything is blended in real good and not so harsh. Okay, before I apply my lid color, because I am using one of the Morphe's metallic shadows, I'm gonna go ahead and apply um, my outer V. And so I'm taking that Morphe M507 brush again, the one that's really good in your crease, and I'm just gonna go in with Lethal, right there, but I'm not gonna apply too much. And this, you can use it, to blend in the shade as well as apply. I like to just use this one to apply the color and then I'll go back in and blend. So I'm just applying this like that and then up. Then I'm gonna go in with the MB46 brush again. And that is gonna help blend it. You can do little circular motions and back and forth motions. I feel like this brush is better at blending outer V shades than this one though, the M433 brush. I like just to use this in the crease and this to help blend um, shades like that. All right, next I am applying the metallic shadow in Fugo, and I'm just going to be using an M326 brush. This brush is so tiny and so precise, and that is why I love it for a good flat brush. So I'm just applying the product on the brush. And then I'm gonna take my mirror right here so you guys can see better. Focus. You see how you can get right in there? Cause it's so tiny and so precise. I love that. So I'm not gonna apply it all the way cause I wanna have that darker color right there. So I'm gonna apply it about right there and then I'll get the dark color again and blend it in once this dries. So I'm gonna let this dry really fast. All right, that's all nice and dry. I'm just gonna go back in to the M507 brush, whatever's left on my brush. I'm just gonna kinda blend in with that. So there's no line. And then I'm just gonna go back in with my MB46. I'm just gonna blend it in a little bit more because I feel like it's so harsh. And then I'm gonna go back in with the scone brush, the brush that I used to begin with. I'm not applying anything on the brushes. Just using this to blend. Now I am going to do my brows. I am taking Morphe's Brow Cream in Latte. And I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills brush number 12. Now, if you're gonna use a pomade, I highly recommend this brush for that. I have other um, brow pens or brow brushes, but I have never found a brush that is like the Anastasia number 12 brush. I can't find one that works just as good. So I'm gonna fast forward this part of me doing my brows, but you guys can kind of see how I do it.
All right, so I just let my eyebrows set like that, and then after I do my foundation, I will apply some more stuff over it. So all the products I use, I will link down below. I'm not going to show you guys like exactly, just because this is a brush video. But next, I'm going to be showing you the Beauty Blender. So the Beauty Blender, I already have my primer and everything on. I like to apply my foundation using this. I have tried using brushes before and I personally don't like them. It leaves my foundation streaky for me. And I don't know if maybe it's because I have dry skin. I'm not sure. But personally, I just love the way the Beauty Blender leaves my skin. And also, you can use it for like everything. I use it for my foundation, which I'm showing you here. And I'll show you what else I use it for. So Beauty Blender is $20, which is a little pricey. So if you want something a little cheaper, you can go with a Real Technique sponge. I have tons of these. You can go with a Morphe one. This one, I feel like this one's right in the middle of a Beauty Blender and a Real Techniques. A Real Techniques is very firm, but once you wet it, it does fluff up and get similar to the Beauty Blender. However, the Morphe one is not as hard as this, so when you wet it, it's like almost, it's very comparable to the Beauty Blender. So this is $7. This, I believe, is $5.99. Then I have this one. This one's huge. It gets ginormous. This is the, oh, what's her name? I will link it down below. But this one is at the drugstore. I found it at Target. It is very nice. However, it's huge. So I recommend this one more for foundation, maybe your lotion and primer to apply this one. But these three are good for your face, concealer, contour, everything. Next is concealer. I love this. It has a little pointy part to get right under my eye and blend it in. Ooh, I got a hair in me. So while the Beauty Blender is $20, it's actually great to do so many different things that you would have to use a brush for. You'd have to have a couple brushes to do this stuff. So to me, I feel like the Beauty Blender is totally worth it. Contour. Okay, so this is how I do my contour. What I do is I pinch the bottom of it and I just dab it. And what I love about this, I have used brushes for contour, which I do like but I always have to go over it with a beauty blender just so that it's not so harsh. So with the beauty blender, you can blend in your contour and make sure it's not too harsh and doesn't leave that streaky line. You see, it just blends it in so nicely, even under your lip, on your forehead, blending into your hairline. It's just uh, so much better than a brush. All the products that I am using today are pretty much drugstore, so I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Illuminator in When the Nude Strikes. I said I wasn't going to say what I'm using, but whoops, I did that. I will have everything else linked down below, though, like I said. So I will show you. You can also use the Beauty Blender to blend in your cream highlight. Or like let's say, even with your powder, if you apply your highlight too strong, you can just use this to dab over it because your foundation will still be on it and it'll help make it to where it's not so harsh. Baking. So I'm gonna use it to bake today. I bake once in a while, hardly ever though. Always make sure you go in under your eye prior to baking because if you have any creasing, you're going to bake that crease under your eye and it's not going to look cute. So I'm just 
taking one side of it. And just doing what I said, baking. I'm not gonna leave this on very long though, so. It's not gonna do the full effect. All right, one of my favorite powder brushes has to be the IT Cosmetics. This is the CC Skin Perfecting number 702 brush. I just, it's so nice and soft. So I'm gonna use that to take off the powder. Just blend it all over my face. You guys could see my black shirt right now. It's got this powder all over it. This is why I don't really pick, because under my eyes, it gets pretty dry, and then you can kind of see it. Okay, so next I am taking, I'm doing powder. I did all my, my, um, highlight, my concealer, my contour. Now I'm going, since I powdered, I'm going to do my powder stuff. Now I'm taking this Morphe contour brush. This was in their vegan set. I will link it down below, like I said before. I really like this. It is very large. It really gets my big old forehead. I hate my forehead, it's just so big. And then under the jawline, so you don't have a gobble gobble. For my blush, I am going to be taking an M509 brush. And this is a great blush brush. I have, um, let me just put this on really fast. I have other brushes that I use, but these brushes that I'm showing you today are just the brushes that I used most of the time. I will show you guys a brush collection. I have all different kinds of brands, but these are just brushes I use and I feel like it'll be easier for you guys to get your hands on. So that is why I'm showing you these brushes. For highlight, I'm taking my M310 brush. It's just a nice little fan brush. I love this fan brush because it's it's not too fluffy, but it's still very, I mean, it's a little fluffy, but it's thin at the same time, if that makes sense. I don't know. I went ahead and did my mascara and eyeliner. So for the bottom lash line, I love this little teeny tiny Morphe brush. Now this again was in that um, 12 piece set that I bought. I will link it down below. If I can find these um, brushes that are in the vegan set or the 12 piece set that I recently bought, I will link them down below. If not, I will link the sets that I bought. Okay, I'm going to take Extra Bitter, that color right there. It's like this orangish brown shade. Make sure you tap off that brush. And you can see it just gets right in there. It's so precise. I am not one of those people that can do that smokiness under the eye with those huge fluffy brushes like a lot of these makeup gurus do. I cannot do that. I will look like a weirdo if I do that. So I have to have a teeny tiny precision brush like this and get right in there, maybe go a little smoky. But this brush is great because you can control how smoky it is. All right, you guys, so that was it. I just finished up the look. Like I said, I will have everything, all the products that I used on my face today linked down below. And yeah, I will have all these brushes linked down below. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any videos you would like me to do, then just leave it down below in a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching.